Church family, we have so many amazing events taking place on the Avenue. But none quite as momentous as today's 19th pastoral anniversary for the Dr. Marcus D. Cosby. We are so excited to have Dr. Howard John Wesley coming all the way from Alexandria, Virginia to be our guest preacher of the day. I also found out just moments ago that there's a bit of an after party planned for today after services, so stay tuned. That's right, and we will conclude with the Blessings on Blessings Church Picnic at the Discovery Green starting at 319, where we will have food, fun, and fellowship for everyone. Last year, we had an amazing time, so trust me, you don't want to miss out. Church family, I'm Jasmine Yates. And I'm Brian Keith Robeson II. And this is your Avenue News. Join us for week four of Wednesdays in the Word. This week, we will hear from Bishop Joseph W. Walker III, pastor of the Mount Zion Baptist Church in Nashville, Tennessee, and international presiding bishop of the Full Gospel Baptist Church Fellowship. Somebody tonight, when you look at what God did in your life, you look at how far God brought you, look at your neighbor, tell them, this should not be a quiet pew. Tell them, because God's been too good. We look forward to this time of revival. Meet us in the cathedral at 7 p.m. The premier young adult holiday gala will take place at the Hilton University of Houston on Saturday, December 2nd at 6 p.m. For the first time, we are stepping out in our holiday chic and walking the red carpet to celebrate the season. Early bird tickets are on sale now on our website and space is limited. Follow the Young Adults Ministry on social media for more updates. The Health, Wellness, and Recreation Ministry is hosting a 5K family fun run and bike ride. There will also be a walking course in the parking lot for those who may not want to walk the 5K. Advanced bike riders will participate in a 40K scenic bike ride. Please bring new school supplies as donations to participate. Register today, scan the QR code for more information. All young adults are invited to join us for our annual Friendsgiving on Saturday, November 11th at 11.30 a.m. This is a wonderful opportunity to celebrate all of God's blessings. Come to the church for food, games, music, and surprises. Bring a friend and a grateful heart. Tickets are only $15 and space is limited. So get your tickets on Eventbrite today. We look forward to seeing you there. The virtual information and orientation meeting for the boys' Rites of Passage program will take place on October 21st and November 18th at 11 a.m. We're excited about the future of the program and your potential future involvement. If you are interested in volunteering or registering your child, visit the church's website for the Zoom link. For more information, please contact Reverend Richard Boone IV at rboone at wheelbc.org. Come and learn more about the Young Adult Ministry. Stop by after both services to grab a snack and a cool drink and learn how you can get involved. Tables will be set up in the front of the church and the courtyard. See you there. All veterans on the avenue are invited to join us for an appreciation dinner on Sunday, November 12th, as we observe Veterans Day and express our gratitude for your service. Register online on the events page of our website or email Reverend Barbara Williams at bwilliams at wheelerbc.org. After experiencing the pain and discomfort of fibroids, I endured six rounds of IVF to have two children. I experienced multiple miscarriages and now I have two children. Our stories are different, but our journeys were similar. No matter your journey, you can find support in the waiting room. Whether you're on the path to parenthood or considering it in the future, we invite you to join us the fourth Thursday of every month at 6.30 p.m. here at the church. The waiting room is a place to find support, encouragement, and solace during challenging times. I did. Remember, you're not alone on this journey. For more information, contact the waiting room at wheelerbc.org. There's so much taking place, and we hope you stay connected. For more information, follow us on Flock Notes, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, or our app. I'm Jasmine Yates. And I'm Brian Keith Robeson II. And this has been your Avenue, Avenue News. News. And remember, we are Wheeler.
Web. Good morning and praise the Lord. We'll have a new family. Please welcome the bells of praise this morning. section in the cathedral in the sanctuary who will testify I got to get to church because if I don't get to church there's no telling what my spirit might do to me if I don't get to church there's no telling what my mind might do to me if I don't get to the Lord's house there's no telling how depleted I might be by the next time you see me somebody in here ought to thank God that you were able to wake up this morning put your clothes on make your way to Wheeler church. Park your car all the way over there. Walk all the way to the cathedral. Make your way to the sanctuary. Find yourself a seat. Sit yourself down. Then stand yourself up. Then sit back down. Then stand back up. Then sit back down and stand back up because you needed something in the sanctuary that you can't get at the ballpark. You get something in the sanctuary you can't get at the club. You get something in the sanctuary you can't get in the stadium. You
Come on, family. For this is the day that the Lord has made. We shall rejoice and be glad in it. We're going to enter into his gates with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise. Come on and put those hands together.
that the Lord has made. We shall rejoice and be glad in it. For I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord, for he's a great God. So make a joyful noise unto the Lord, all ye land. Serve the Lord with gladness. We come before his presence with singing. Know ye not that he is God. It is he that hath made us, and not we ourselves. We're his people and the sheep of his pastor. We've entered into his gates with thanksgiving. We've come into his courts with praise. We are thankful unto him and we bless his name. I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. My soul shall make a boast in the Lord. The humble shall hear thereof and be glad. So magnify the Lord with me. Let us exalt his name together. Lift up your hands, O ye gates, and be ye lifted up, ye everlasting doors. And the King of glory, the great God, shall come in. Who is this King of glory? The Lord, strong and mighty. Lift up your hands, O ye gates, and be ye lifted up everlasting doors and the king of glory shall come in who is the king of glory the lord of hosts he is the king of glory hallelujah hey glory to god glory to god glory to god this is the day the lord has made Bless your name. Listen, we're preparing for a moment of prayer and we invite you to refer to the list that will be on the screen for our bereaved families and also remember to lift up those requests that are on the homepage, I'm sorry, on the congregational care page of our website. We have no services scheduled this week. <laughs> Hallelujah. But we do want you to please keep the family of one of our longtime members, Sister Mildred Prince, in prayer. A private graveside service was held for Sister Prince last Thursday, so just remember them in your prayers. Again, the Congregational Care page on the church website has a complete listing of all of our members' care concerns. Take whatever posture of prayer you choose right now, and most importantly, let's Let's posture our hearts before the Lord, before this great God, before this mighty, mighty, wonderful God, before our everlasting Father, our Prince of Peace. Ah, hallelujah. Lord, we bless your name. We thank you for another day. We thank you for the privilege to call on you as our Father. It means relationship with you. You have chosen us, mm, adopted as your own born again, actually, by your spirit. God, we thank you for new birth, new life in Christ. And now we are new creations and the old has passed away. Behold, all things have been made new. We thank you that we are not the same as we used to be. Hey, God, we're not all that we will be. We shall be, but we're not what we used to be. And so we give you glory today because we are gathered together in your name. There was a time some of us weren't even thinking about church on a Sunday, but oh, we bless your name that we understand the privilege of worship right now. We, we glorify you, God, because you called us in. You called us out. You set us apart. You blessed us with your spirit, and we thank you. Oh, how we thank you, Lord, that with all that you know about us, you still choose us and you still use us. And we owe you our praise. We owe you our thanks. We owe you our worship. Today, God, we acknowledge that it was because of Jesus Christ that we have this awesome opportunity to know you intimately, to know you personally, because of the blood shed at Calvary that covers all of our sins. So we will not act like we got it all right. We confess to you. We miss the mark in some ways, but we thank you for grace and mercy. We thank you for another chance, another opportunity. We thank you that you don't deal with us according to our sin, but your word says as far as the east is from the west, that's how far you remove our sin and transgressions from us. And we thank you that we are in the beloved and now we are your sons and daughters. Hallelujah. 
joint heirs with Christ. Thank you that we have a new nature. You are working in us. And thank you, oh God, that we are now yours. And then that you called us together as a body of believers here at Wheeler Avenue. And you placed here, oh God, almost now 19 years ago, yes, 19 years ago, you selected one who would be the the under shepherd under your guidance and the one who would teach and feed us according to your truth you handpicked one who would stand and proclaim your gospel and so we celebrate what you've done to bless us with one who is after your own heart we thank you god we thank you for marcus d cosby we thank you oh god for the anointing in his life the gift of preaching and teaching and prayer we thank you for a man of integrity and humility and while we celebrate him we've got to praise you because you did it all you did it you picked him up out of the south side of chicago you planted him oh god here in houston and you caused him to flourish his family his wife his children and now his children's children god we pray your blessings over his life and ministry and we thank you that we are under it because we've been blessed because you blessed him. Uh, our lives are richer because you blessed him. Our, our families are whole because you blessed him. How many times we heard a word? Hey, because the Bible says and our lives came in order because of your ministry through the man and we praise you today that we get to celebrate what you've done. Now we ask, oh God, that you continue for the next year and even beyond to use him and enlarge his territory. Hey, yes, 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 God enlarge the territory and we pray now even for the pastor who will come a good friend for many years and i pray that the preaching power that is on howard john wesley would be magnified in this place that he will stand under the anointing of your holy spirit and declare with us said the lord god almighty that souls be saved lives be and enriched encouraged and we leave here better than when we came thank you for the sisterhood the fellowship the brotherhood and the unity in this house today because where there is unity you command a blessing we pray now for the commanded blessing and the manifest presence oh god that will literally destroy yokes and liberate lives and set captives free and save souls and heal in the name of jesus do what you want to do in this atmosphere set it up so that you receive all the glory because it's yours that's why we came in jesus name now we give you all the glory and praise. Sing through the singers, play through the musicians, and have it the praises of your people. We'll be careful, Lord God, to give you all the glory, all the worship you are worthy of. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, we pray. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Yes, it's in that name that we pray this morning. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Thank you, Lord. How many grateful for that name this morning? Wonderful Jesus. All my life you have been faithful. So, so good. Every breath that I am able, I will sing of the goodness of God. I will sing of the goodness of God. Come on, help me say.
Would you stand for the reading of God's word? The prophet Isaiah records Isaiah 40, verses 27 through 31. Why do you complain, Jacob? Why do you say, Israel, my way is hidden from the Lord, my cause is disregarded by my God? Do you not know? Have you not heard? The Lord is the everlasting God, the creator of the ends of the earth. He will not grow tired or weary, and his understanding no one can fathom. He gives strength to the weary and increases the power of the weak. Even youths grow tired and weary, and young men stumble and fall. But, but those who hope in the Lord will renew their strength. They will soar on wings like eagles. They will run and not grow weary. They will walk and not faint. God's word for God's people. To God be the glory. Great things he has done. Hallelujah. Please remain standing for this morning's hymn. How many love Jesus this morning? Oh, yes, I do. Way down, I do. Hallelujah. Oh, yes, God. Come on, let's sing. There is a name.
because he first loved me. Thank God for Jesus on this day. This is the day that the Lord has made. We've come to rejoice and be glad in it. We're all the lovers of God in the place. Hallelujah. What a joy it is to greet you in the name that is above all names. That name that is Jesus, our loving Lord and liberator. And I am delighted to welcome special guests who are present with us on this Sunday. I'm going to ask that if this is your very first time worshiping in Wheeler Avenue, that you would stand. We want to honor your presence among us. Any first time visitors, would you stand so that we can thank God for your presence this Sunday? Amen. Amen. To God be the glory. Church family, help me give a really warm wheel of welcome to all of these first time visitors this Sunday morning. To God be the glory. To each of you who stands as first time visitor on behalf of our senior pastor, the Reverend Dr. Marcus D. Cosby, our founding pastor emeritus, and the entirety of the church family known as Wheeler Avenue, allow for me to express to you just how excited we are that you've opted to worship with us on this Sunday. We're clear that you had options as to where you might spend this day in worship, so we neither take it lightly nor for granted that you are here with us. If you have a church home, please take back our warmest greetings and regards. Let your church family, let your pastor know that we were excited about your presence among us on this Sunday. However, if you do not have a church home, we pray that you would truly be blessed by the entirety of this experience of worship, for we would love to call you members of this body of believers and family of faith known as Wheeler Avenue. Whatever your reality is, we just thank God that you're here to worship with us on this day. We can prove to you just how excited we are about your presence among us this Sunday morning. Amen. Amen. As you claim your seat, do us a favor. There are instructions on the screens. Would you text visit WABC to 77411? That will afford our pastor the opportunity to write you a letter later on this week expressing his joy with your presence among us, if you would do us that favor. We likewise thank God for all of you who worship with us virtually. We are Wheeler wherever. So wherever you are around this, our God's globe, it is our joy to welcome you even virtually into this experience. And we pray that you have been blessed and will be blessed as you share in worship with us. If it's your very first time and you're on YouTube or Facebook, there are chats that are enabled there and we can uh, hear from you and you can let us know that it's your first time. There are brothers and sisters in those chats who would love to greet you with the love of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ on this Lord's Day. We thank God for you one and all. And there are special guests who are present with us in the cathedral. We thank God for Brother Tyrone Willis who is running for Houston City Council District B. We honor your presence among us. Mr. Danielle Keyes Best is running for Houston City Council at large position two. Where's Danielle? There you are, amen, in your seat. Oh, I should have looked there. All right, praise God. And we thank God for Chris Hollins, who is here running for Houston City Council, now Houston City Controller. Amen. Amen, praise the Lord. Sounds like they like you, Chris. Uh, Listen, you can tell that this is, who is this group of ladies in red? I'm sorry, I don't have your information. Who are y'all? Y'all Deltas, I kind of guessed that. All right, <laughs> praise the Lord for these Deltas who are worshiping with us on this Sunday as well. They had a phenomenal, phenomenal candidate forum yesterday and we thank God for their activism and helping us. Uh, we are mindful that early voting is on the way. We thank God that we will be mindful of all of the things that we have to be mindful of as we vote. Uh, tomorrow begins the first day of early voting, as a matter of fact, from October 23rd through November 3rd, and we want to be mindful of our responsibility to be civically minded. This is no average day. This is no ordinary day. This is no trivial or trite day. This is a special day in worship. We are here with Dr. Howard John Wesley, with the Kurt Carr Singers, with handbells, with a mass choir to celebrate 19 phenomenal years of pastoral leadership under Reverend Dr. Marcus D. Cosby. Would you help me celebrate God for the gift that God has given to us, our national treasure, the one who preaches his heart out around the world, our senior pastor, our leader, our shepherd, our visionary, the one who loves after us. Come on, help me thank God for 19 years of peace and prosperity. We thank God for our senior pastor on this day, and we honor him, we love him, and we bless God for him. Thank God for you, sir. 
listen, come on, come on. If God has ever used this man to speak to you, to bless you, to help you, to pray for you, to get you through, why don't you give God praise? We are the better because God has sent this man to be our leader and we cannot, must not take that for granted. Happy anniversary to you. Come on, happy anniversary to you. It's like happy birthday, but happy anniversary. No, I'm just kidding. All right. Listen, we are delighted that in honor of our pastor's 19th anniversary, the brother Kurt Carr has brought with him the Kurt Carr Singers, and we are delighted that they are here with us. The presence of the Lord is here. Can you feel it in the atmosphere? Come on, the presence of the Lord is here. And we thank God on this day that the presence of Kurt Carr and the Kurt Carr Singers is here as well. Praise the Lord, everybody. There's a miracle in the sanctuary for you now. Scream, praise.
Jesus. And prosperity too. speak life to you. You can depend on God to see you through. You can depend on me. Come on, Mr. Guitar Play, give it to me. Church, you play that one more time. Look at somebody say, Prayer does change things. Come on, everybody. I pray for you. I pray for you. And you pray for me. God's got changed me. I want to hear just the piano and just the audience. Turn around and sing that to somebody. Come on. And watch God change things. Look at somebody and tell them, I will not be jealous when you get blessed. Because the God I serve can bless you and me at the same time and still have blessings left over. Can I get a witness in the house? Can I get a witness in the house?
First name, one, two, three. Nothing happened. <laughs> this time, as loud as you can, say your second name, your, your last name, one, two, three. <laughs> Nothing happened. Now I know you love her with all your heart. On the count of three, say your mama's name, one, two, three. Love you, Mama, but today's not Mother's Day. But now tell somebody I need some room. I'm getting ready to call the name that's above every name. The name that's the living name. The name that makes sick bodies healed. What's the name? What's the name? something that a lot of pastors, I've never done this for a pastor before, I'm going to do the Kurt Carr, Marcus Cosby remake. Now, yes, you're in Houstonian, but you're, as my great grandmother said, but your roots are from the south side of Chicago. Can we make pastor feel at home? Can we go to the south side of Chicago? And my choir, this is my choir up here. Give it up for the choir. Let's go to the south side. Everybody put those hands together.
You fell asleep, don't know how long you were asleep. But you didn't run into a tree. Look at your neighbor and say, that's what God had angels around you. God blocked it. In fact, you know what, since it's 19 years, come here, Pastor Cosby. I want you to get a piece of this right here. God blocked it. Right there. Praise him 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 right
them right there. House of the Lord on this fourth Sunday of the month of October to celebrate the goodness of the Lord, to worship and fellowship with the people of the Lord, to hear the word of the Lord that is sung and then that will be spoken. It is good for us to be here. Will you help me celebrate a God who keeps on blocking that which would seek to come against you and destroy you? Help me praise God for Kurt Carr and the Kurt Carr Singers. Thank you, man. Thank you so much. He is my beloved brother and friend. I thank God for him. We used to only see each other in the airport, and now we text each other and let each other know that we're praying for one another, and I'm grateful for Kurt Carr. Thank you, Minister Lewis Music Ministry, for bringing these sainted singers to Wheeler Avenue Baptist Church today. Amen. You got to watch walking up on me like that. I'm from the south side of Chicago. Don't let these 19 years fool you. I still remember. I remember the years before 19 years. Amen. And yeah, I pray for you afterwards, but I'll take you out. Amen. I'm just playing. I'm just playing a little bit. Amen. Praise the Lord. What a joy it is to be here. I'm so excited about this day and this privilege and this opportunity to share in celebration with you. How we honor the Lord for these 19 years that God has given us to share together. And I'm so excited that out of all of the things that you could have done this morning, you came to Wheeler Avenue Baptist Church to worship the Lord and to celebrate what God has been doing over these years. Our church has a rich 61-year history of great things, 42 years of the pastor of the Reverend Dr. William Alexander Lawson, and we thank God for that. Amen. Look forward to him being with us in the next service, and these 19 years have been nothing but a blessing to me. When pastor retired on August 31st, uh, 2004, he entrusted his life's work into my hands, and that was a gargantuan responsibility. But I'm so grateful that you have helped me to serve this present age in such a wonderful way, and now we can look back over these 19 years and say, to God be the glory for the things he has done. Help me celebrate God for these 19 years. Praise the name of the Lord. Help me celebrate, God, for every soul that was saved, every life that was changed, every family that was blessed, every person who was fed or clothed or housed. Help me celebrate, God, for what we have done together as a people of God in this place called Wheeler Avenue. Hallelujah. Amen. No one can pastor if there are no people to follow. 
And so I thank God for each one of you uh, who have helped me to do the work of ministry in this place for these years. I celebrate God for the wonderful privilege. Thank God. There's so many people, and I will not take time. I want to get the preacher up. I will not take time to thank specifically all those who have been so, so kind and loving toward me throughout these 19 years. And not me alone, but also to the entirety of the Cosby family. Thank God for Mrs. Cosby and for our children. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. 19 years, girl. Praise the Lord. And uh, I praise God for that. Um, uh, my brother moved here to help. He literally moved to Wheeler, to Houston. He said, bro, I want to help you. And um, I didn't know that meant I had to give him a job, but uh, that's... That's what that meant, and uh, he has sincerely and significantly helped me to do the work of ministry at Wheeler Avenue. Thank God for my big brother, Deacon Andre Bernard Cosby. He's running around working right now. He's running around working, and it was not until he came down here that my mother had an epiphany. Oh, maybe I should go down there too. And so she is here, and I thank God for Mr. Bobby Jean Todd Cosby. Amen. So glad that she is here. Oh, here comes my brother. Look at him walking down that aisle over there. Like, what you say about me? I'll tell you later. I'll tell you later. But I appreciate you, man. I appreciate your service to the kingdom. Thank God for these five wonderful children of ours. Uh, Adrian Marie Gaines, uh, she was here this week. Uh, then she had to go back because today is their wedding anniversary. So she couldn't stay for me because uh, she had to go back for him. Ain't that some stuff? Lord have mercy. But I thank God for her. She was the only child we brought to Houston 25 years ago. And now we got four more. We praise God for Ashley Marie, for Marcus D. Cosby II, for Matthew D., who's over here praising the Lord, and for Aaliyah Marie. Uh, all these five wonderful people have been a blessing to our family, and I praise God for them. And then Adrian not only came down here, but she left with us their firstborn child. Matt Micah, Richard Gaines is here. He's going to hang out with us for the week. And we praise God for him. Amen. So praise the Lord for all the wonderful things that are happening. Thank you so much, all the leadership and membership of our church. This pastoral staff is amazing. And I want to thank God for our executive pastor and these clergy persons who do the work of ministry every single day. They are serving the Lord with gladness, and I'm grateful to all of you. Uh, they know very well that I love, I love, I love music and preaching. Music and preaching. If we could do that every day, all day, I'd be a happy man. But they brought Kurt Carr because I love music. We brought Dr. Howard John Wesley because I love preaching. I love preaching. Amen. And in just about seven to ten minutes, he's going to stand here and for the... 20th year in a row on this fourth Sunday, he's going to proclaim the Word of God. He's been doing it since my installation day of us uh, of October 24th, 2004, until this very day. Every single, even when he had to send in a video, no, he didn't send in a video. So it's, you missed a year during the pandemic, so you got to preach four times a day just because you missed a year. Uh, but we have been blessed by his preaching. And I told him, I told uh, Rem AJ in the back and, all, uh, and told him that he has been here all 25 years that I've been here. Every single year he has come. He used to preach youth revival, and now he has to preach seniors revival because he's old. Uh, but I thank God for him. I thank God for him and for the gift that he is uh, to me. Last year, last month, so many of you went to Alfred Street Baptist Church and celebrated 15 years of his pastoral service. And um, listen, if the Lord tarries, as the old saints used to say, if the Lord tarries and we're here next fourth Sunday of October, the Alfred Street Church is coming here next year, and we're excited about that. We're looking forward to that experience, and we can't wait to hear what God has to say through him, the senior pastor of the Alfred Street Church, but even more than that, my beloved brother and friend for nearly or more than 40 years. We don't know how far back it goes, but we thank God for all of these wonderful years that we have shared in fellowship and friendship one with another. We've got a church picnic today, church family. I'm excited about that. Yes, yes, yes. After all of this singing and preaching, uh, we're going to do my third, one of my third, one of my other 
favorite things. I don't know if it's number three. We're going to be eating. Amen. We're going to eat. And uh, we're looking forward to that. So we're going to go play and have a good time at the church picnic uh, down at Discovery Green. Everybody should know where it is. If not, just ask somebody throughout the day and they'll make sure that you know. If you haven't registered, uh, you need to go to the atrium. Is that right? And talk to the Tillmans and they may or may not let you come because you should have registered by now. But uh, I'm grateful for Deacon and Deacon and Tillman who have been serving with amazing excellence over the past few weeks, months to make this a reality and their team who has served with them I'll say more about that next week wants you to be in prayer and Bible study with us Wednesday at 6 a.m. we'll be praying at noon we'll be in Bible study with the Reverend Roberts and then at 6 p.m. we'll be praying here in the cathedral and then at 7 p.m. our fourth and final Wednesday in the word as the Bishop Joseph Warren Walker the third comes back to Wheeler Avenue to preach the Word of God to us revival has been amazing and we are so grateful that God has given us a wonderful revival during this month and we're looking forward to the way that the Bishop will close us out this coming week listen our mayoral candidates are in abundance and they will be here on our church campus Thursday to share their platforms with us and you can ask them questions deltas thank you so much for having a candidates forum yesterday we appreciate that as the Reverend Johnson has mentioned and we thank God. Thank God for you and for the work that you did. And now we'll come back to this campus on Thursday uh, as the mayoral candidates come at 5.30 p.m. 5.30 p.m. Be here. Where, where, where will we be? Ben? In the Community Life Center at 5.30 p.m. You've heard about early voting. Please make sure that if you are one of those who prefers to vote early that you begin to do so uh, this week. And we'll certainly be excited about the responsibility that we have to carry out our civic duties. Next Sunday, we mentioned to you last week that although most of us uh, acknowledge breast cancer awareness uh, during the month of October, it is likewise Domestic Violence Awareness Month. So next month, like we did last week, we wore pink. Next, next week, next Sunday, we will wear purple, and we invite everyone in the Lord's Church to wear purple in acknowledgement of, of Domestic Violence Awareness Month. Unfortunately, domestic violence even occurs in the Lord's Church, and we've got to be aware of that, and we've got to speak to it and acknowledge it, and we've got to celebrate those who have survived the violence that they've experienced in their own homes, in their own families, and we praise God for that. So please wear purple next week. And let's uh, remember those sisters and brothers in our prayers. We're canning hunger. It's time. It's time. For those who've been around Wheeler Avenue a long time, you already know that every uh, October into November, we bring canned goods to the Lord's Church to make sure that we can restock our food pantry. And I hope that you will do that for us uh, this coming, uh, these coming weeks. Uh, we'll begin this week. Just begin to bring all the canned goods that you can to the church. Buy as many as you can uh, and bring them to the church. And we're going to do, meet, do our best to meet our goal. Want to know what our goal is this year? Oh, you said 30,000, not quite, 25,000. We're just going to go with 25,000 this year. We can do it. We've done it before, and so we'll just do it again. How about that? So please begin to bring your canned goods to the church. No less than 25,000 this year. It will be fabulous. I want to thank God uh, again for this uh, pastoral staff that we have. Uh, we're celebrating 19 years today, but um, the Reverend Dr. Barbara Eustace Williams is celebrating 80 years today. 80. Come here, Doc. Come here, Doc. Come on. Come here, come here, come here. Come here. Come here, Doc. Come on. Come here. It's her birthday, y'all. 80 years old today. 80 years old today. Real. There's somebody there. Come on. We, we can just stand. Come on. I just want you to see the woman of God who has been counseling men, women, and families for more than 30 years at Wheeler Avenue Baptist Church. We want to tell you, happy birthday, ma'am. That's for you. That's for you. Ooh-wee. Praise the Lord. Listen, she loves to tell her age. She loves to tell it. And because every, most people, many people in her family, save her mother, died in their 50s or before they were 50 years old. So she all on her father's side so she always tells her age because she wants to thank God that she outlived what the God blocked it I tell you God blocked it and for 80 years she's been cooking with grease praise the Lord and she doesn't even look 80 years old how about that won't he preserve you won't he preserve you happy birthday dad God bless you be safe be safe got a leopard print shoes on 
Lord have mercy. And she fast too. She just fast. And we praise God for her. Wanted to celebrate with her today. Amen. Thank God for 80 years of life. To God be the glory. Bells of praise, you all are amazing. Thank you for bringing your bells to ring them for the glory of the Lord. Music ministry, you're fabulous. I want to hear some more music. And so it's time for the music ministry of Kirk Carr and the Kirk Carr Singers and the Wheeler Avenue Church to bless us as they prepare us for the Word of God. The Word of God shall be preached to us by the Reverend Dr. Howard John Wesley, co-pastor of Wheeler Avenue Baptist Church, senior pastor of Alfred Street Baptist Church, Alexandria, Virginia. Hear ye him. Reverend Ronnie, Ronnie Davis, please stand. Sister Linda Cole, please stand. These two individuals are from Emmanuel Baptist Church, 8301 South Damon Avenue, Chicago, Illinois, 60620. Brother L.K. Curry was our pastor. Listen, is uh, Milton Shackelford here today? Milton, please stand, Milton. Each of these folk came to, wheel, came to Houston. For, he was also a member of Emmanuel. Each of them came to Houston for various reasons. Um, Milton joined uh, Wheeler Avenue when he was a student at Texas Southern University. You can see he's now old as, as uh, well, never mind. He's old, uh, so it's been a long time. That was long before I got here. But these individuals came to Wheeler Avenue. They joined. They no longer live in Houston, but I, they came back today to celebrate with us. And I want to thank God for my Emmanuel family that came down here, joined our church and have been a blessing to me and to our family. God bless you, you may be seated. We appreciate you. Thank you, ushers. The ushers have helped me to remember that no matter how much I love music and preaching, it's offering time, we got to give. Um, Cause we got to pay for Kirk Carr and um, that boy ain't cheap. And so we wanna make sure that we, that we bless, uh, bless the Lord, first of all, through the giving of our gifts. And as the ushers move about us, they're giving, they're providing envelopes for those of us who need them. And if you need an envelope, please utilize these envelopes to use, to place your paper gifts therein. Uh, the offering receptacles are lining the walls of the cathedral as you leave after the benediction. Just place your gifts into those receptacles and you will be, and you will be blessed as a consequence of your obedience and your, your generosity. If you'd like to use the, the digital platforms, you'll see them on the screens. And we hope that you will utilize them. To all those who are wheeling, we have a congregants. God bless you, one and all. We appreciate you for sharing with us in worship this Lord's Day. I want to pray over our gifts, and then we'll hear the music ministry, and the preached word shall be proclaimed in that order. Let us pray. Gracious God, we give you thanks for your faithfulness toward us. We heard the bells ringing this morning that great is your faithfulness. We honor you for all that you mean to us, all that you do for us. We honor you for the privilege to now give back unto you a portion of what you have given to us. We thank you so much for being so faithful. May we be counted faithful in our stewardship as we honor you with our tithes and our offerings and our gifts to debt elimination and to the building and to the and to missions and mercy. May all that we do be to your glory and to your honor. Let no one lack as a consequence of what they give this Sunday. But will you return to your sons and daughters, some 30, some 60, some 100 fold, so we will always have the testimony of our elders that we can't beat God giving, no matter how we try. We thank you for victory in our finances. In Jesus' name, let the church say amen. Let's give unto our God while we're giving. These saints are going to sing, and this servant is going to proclaim. Pastor Cosby, I love your brother. God bless you. Will you give it up for my singers, the Kirk Carr singer? You know, Pastor Cosby, uh, I started out when I was 19 years old. I was piano player for James Cleveland, Reverend James Cleveland. My name literally was a little short boy that plays for James Cleveland. And he used to always tell the singers, never get the big head because the greatest singer hasn't been heard yet. And I've got some amazing, amazing singers, and it just seems like every now and then God just directs me to a hidden treasure. And I want her to come and just sing a couple of church songs for Pastor Cosby because I know he loves church songs. Her name is Leah Buckley. She's from Memphis, Tennessee. 
her first time ever coming to Wheeler Baptist Church. And Wheeler is a place of love. And, and let me just say this. I sneak in here so many times and get fed and get fed and get fed. And Pastor Cosby said, you ain't going to sit there too long. I'm going to get you up on that stage. So I'm so happy to be here today and share with you guys. You guys are my cousins. What's up, cousins? And this is your new cousin. This is Leah. I want Leah to come. She's only 23, and she has an amazing, incredible voice. Are you even 23 yet? <laughs> Cut the music. For grace. Take never see. Now she's also a treasure God in Christ, girl. Take me to church.
19 years. You see. In the valley, in the valley. Lorraine, take me to the valley. Give me a breakdown.
Won't you bow and be in prayer with me? For every mountain, God. For every valley. For every diagnosis. For every closed door. For every storm, for every sickness that you brought us through. We give you praise. Thank you, God, for being God. Now, God, I ask you to speak in this place for your servants are listening. In the name of Jesus, who is our Christ, we do pray. Amen. As you rest yourselves, we will grace and peace be unto you. From God who loves us as mother and father and Jesus Christ who always and alone is our resurrected, our risen, our reigning, and our returning redeemer. I have been raised in church. I know the proper protocols of what I'm supposed to acknowledge in this moment. But let me just start by saying that I thank God for another day to be in the land of the living and in the house of God. And I hope I'm not the only one that knows that it is only of the Lord's mercies that we are not consumed and great is the faithfulness of our God. Allow me to skip over all the protocol of who needs to be called you, your name, you, you've been called. I'm here today because I want to thank this church family for two things. First and foremost, I want to thank you for the love and kindness that you have bestowed upon my friend. Amen. I have known the Reverend Dr. Marcus Cosby since we were younger than 19. And I've reached a stage in my life, Kirk Carr, where the only thing I like to do is to really see my friends win. To see the favor of God fall on those whom I'm close to. And Wheeler, I want to thank you for the love that you have bestowed upon him for more than 19 years, for some 25 years now, and the way that you've shaped and molded him into the preacher and pastor that he is. He's a blessing as my friend, but if you know he's a blessing as your pastor, would you help me honor once again the man whom God shaped, anointed, ordained, called, consecrated, commissioned, and created to stand in this place. Pastor, thank you, man. I take it as no small honor to be able to stand in this place where he shares his convictions about Jesus Christ. And for so many years, he has extended the graceful invitation for me to come, and I thank you, Wheeler. He did not get here by himself, that, that God has shaped and used so many others to help him both in ministry, in life, and in love. We want to acknowledge Sister Audrey Marie. The years have been good to you, Sister Audrey, and you look good, sis. Happy anniversary to you as well. This pastoring ain't easy. Being a pastor's wife is almost impossible. And as you pray for him, I ask that you would also remember her in your prayers, that she might be that helpmate God shaped and formed to make home happy for Pastor Cosby. The Bible says that before I knew you in your mother's womb, I shaped and formed you as a prophet. I want to thank God for where this all began. In the womb of Sister Bobby, it is a pleasure to always be with you, Mama, on this day. Thank you for giving us the gift of Marcus Cosby. And I want to thank you, Wheeler Street, Alfred Avenue. We blend our congregations together. For the love you've poured on him has also been a blessing unto me. Many of you all came to we to Alfred Street. Oh God, I'm gonna keep calling it Wheeler Alvin. You came to Alfred Street on last month as we celebrated our 15th anniversary, and I look to return the favor on next year if God say the same as we're bringing everybody. We're renting members from Washington D.C. to come um, so that we can fill this house and celebrate the 20th anniversary as God will give grace. But Wheeler, thank you so much for the love you poured on him uh, that has also been a blessing unto me. And to all of you, my brothers and sisters in Christ and creation, I look around this church family and I see some blazers that just make me happy of the men of Cap Alpha Psi Fraternity Incorporated. Uh, brothers, and, a, amen, amen. I, I know your pastor's made some mistakes in his life, but we, we 
pray for him uh, with his black suit wearing self. Listen, we brought a gift um, for Pastor Cosby and I gave it to him and uh, on the memo line it says buy you a blue suit. Amen. Go buy you a blue, a blue suit. Amen. From Alpha Street Baptist Church. Reverend Piles read it earlier, and the truth be told, you probably don't even need to turn in your Bible to remember it. Isaiah simply said, why do you say, O Jacob, and speak, O Israel, that my ways are hidden from God, that my just claim, my judgment is passed over by our God? Have you not known and have you not heard the everlasting God the Lord the creator of the ends of the earth neither faints nor grows weary his understanding is unsearchable he gives power to the weak and to those who have no might he increases their strength even youth shall faint and grow weary and young people shall fall but they that wait on the Lord, which I had a witness, shall renew their strength. They shall mount up on wings as eagles. They shall run and not get weary. They shall walk and not faint. In that 40th chapter, verse 28 simply says, Have you not known and have you not heard? Do me a favor, if you don't mind sharing the subject of this little sermon with your neighbor, lean over to somebody and say, neighbor, neighbor. Oh, neighbor, oh neighbor, what's wrong with you? What's wrong with you? <laughs> what's wrong with you? These words from the prophet Isaiah are some of the most prolific and profound in all of scripture. Pastor Cosby will tell you that the tradition of African American homiletics and preaching that whenever a black preacher engages in the rhetorical colloquialism of intertextuality, the quoting of passage after passage after passage, if she or he is worth anything, they know to tell you that they that wait on the Lord shall renew their strength. Paul Hansen, who was a scholar of the book of Isaiah, suggests that within all the 66 books of this prophecy, the succinct summary of all that Isaiah says, as a matter of fact, all that the Bible teaches, is that they that wait on the Lord shall renew their strength. Paul Hansen suggested if you read the book of Isaiah, you don't remember anything else. When you get to the end of Isaiah, just remember this. They that wait on the Lord shall renew their strength. Wheeler, allow me to have a little Sunday school with you that the prophecies of Jeremiah and Ezekiel are longer by word length. But no prophecy spans as much time as that of Isaiah. Isaiah's prophecy begins somewhere around 726 B.C. under the reign of Uzziah, who is king of Israel. The prophecy continues through the reign of Jotham and Hezekiah and Ahaz. It goes on through the rise of Nebuchadnezzar and the fall of destruction fall of Jerusalem when Nebuchadnezzar conquers the land. It continues on into the beginning of the exile when the elite of the elite of Israel are deported from their homes and sent over to live in Babylon. The prophecy continues through the duration of the exile. It goes on to the end of the exile and even the return of these exiles back to Jerusalem in some 516 B.C. Isaiah, in all that it covers, encompasses 
226 years. From chapter 1 to chapter 66, Isaiah covers a greater length of time than any other book in the Bible, 216 years. Because of the length of the prophecy of Isaiah, scholars will argue with you that Isaiah is not the oracle of just one prophet. Its time span is too long for just one man, and they would suggest to you that there are actually three prophets who are combined into one book. Teach the Bible, Pastor. The first 39 chapters are attributed to the brother named First Isaiah the son of Amos, who receives his calling in the death of Uzziah, for he says that in the year Uzziah died, that's when I saw the Lord. Chapters 40 to 55 are the oracles of another prophet who is anonymous, so we just call him Second Isaiah. He's called by God in chapter 40 with these words, comfort my people, says the Lord. And then the last, chapter 55 through 50, 66, are another unknown prophet called Third Isaiah. So whenever you're reading in scholarship and you see First, Second, or Third Isaiah, that is a scholar reminding you that the book of Isaiah actually encompasses three prophets. And these words that we hold on to in chapter 40 come from the mouth of Second Isaiah. And the context in which Isaiah speaks here in chapter 40 is critical to understanding the word that he gives. Let me give you some background so you don't miss the breakdown, a little context before you shout on the content. <laughs> this prophecy in chapter 40 is uttered around 536 B.C. It is the beginning of of the end of the exile. I'm mean, certain you missed this. This is the beginning of the end of the exile. These people whom this Isaiah speaks to are those who survived the destruction of Jerusalem. These are folk who fresh in their mind is the memory of their city being destroyed and their homes burned to the ground. They can close their eyes and still smell the fires burning in the temple in Jerusalem. They can hear the sound of missiles being launched into the West Bank to destroy their hospitals and their schools. They are traumatized by the terror of an invading enemy that has conquered their land, and snatched them out of their homes and sent them into a foreign land to live. These are folk who when they got there, they thought they would only be there for a moment only for Jeremiah to come back and tell them, y'all settle in. You're going to be here for a while. These are people who day after day have watched and witnessed their hope and their faith in God dwindle and evaporate a little bit at a time. These are people who've learned to live in disappointment, who prayed that God would bring them out only for God to leave them in. These are folk, Kirkar, who have birthed children in Babylon. And even though they know it's their responsibility to pass on their faith to their children, they struggle trying to get their children to believe in a God that they have given up on. Pastor Cosby, these are the people who put pen to paper 
and wrote Psalm 137. <laughs> Psalm 137, these, these exiles, they, they, they pull a Calhoun tubs from In Living Color. Well, we're in my 80s and 90s, folk. Calhoun Tubbs, you say, wrote a song about it. Want to hear it? Here it goes. They said, by the rivers of Babylon, we hung our harps in the trees because our captors said, sing us one of those praise songs. And they responded, how can we sing the Lord's song? in a foreign land, not just a foreign country, but a land we never thought God would bring us to a place where it feels like God has forsaken us. We can't shout here. And God commissions this second Isaiah to go to them. And this is what God tells them, comfort my people. You go home and you read verse one through 11, he just listen, this is what I want you to tell Israel. Tell them it's the beginning of the end of the exile. Let them know Israel's debt has been paid. Let them know I'm about to restore Jerusalem and return them back home. Let them know I ain't forgot about them, but I'm about to shift this thing, and turn it around in their good. He really gives them the assignment of, of Sam Cooke. Tell them I know it's been a long time coming. But a change is on the way. Give them some good news. That God's about to work this thing out. And the Bible says that when they get the good news, that God is about to shift this thing, they struggle to believe it. They don't accept it. They don't receive it. They've been there so long that they doubt the good news. Pastor, they've heard so many false prophets tell them it's coming to an end that they doubt the words of 2nd Isaiah. These are people who have become functional in despair, who become comfortable in discouragement, who are living with doubt and depression. And beloved, allow me to tell you before you judge them, life can put you there. I know you mighty Baptists today, you got your Bible and you even opened it to Isaiah so your neighbor thinks that everything is all right with you and God, but allow me to testify that the longer you live, at some point in your life, you will find yourself in a strange land. Where you've been waiting on God to do something so long, you just gave up. You've been praying so much and nothing has changed that you decide to quit praying. Your hopes have come crashing down so often that now you live life with no expectation because you feel the safest way to live life is no expectation, no disappointment. You didn't dealt with so many bad Negroes. You come to the conclusion, all oh, y'all ain't no good. You've heard so much bad news that it's hard to trust in any good news. Have you ever been there? That, that's, that's where they are. Because the Bible says that when they hear the good news that it's the beginning of the end of the exile, this is what they say to second Isaiah. God has forgotten about us. 
My ways are hidden from God. God doesn't see what's going on down here because if God saw what was happening to me and if God was who I thought God should be, then this should not be happening. God has forgotten about us. Come by, I tell y'all, ain't nobody immune from verse 27. Don't care how many tongues you talk in. You can carry enough oil in your purse to fry some chicken thighs, but I came by to tell you that at some moment everybody lands in verse 27. Verse 27 is that if God moment. If God was on the throne, this wouldn't happen. If prayer changes things, mama would have survived. If God cared about me, God would have kept me from walking through this thing. If God was who pastor proclaimed him to be for these 19 years, why did this happen to me? At some moment, everybody is in verse 27. Well, I feel my preaching coming. And, and the Bible says that when second Isaiah hears them say, God doesn't see us, he shifts on them. I'm saying you catch this, Leon, this preacher who was called to give a word of encouragement and a word of hope, a word of belief, to let them know God's about to shift this thing. He gets an attitude when he hears what they say. He looks back at him and says, wait, wait, have you not known? And have you not heard? In the real sense, he said, what's wrong with y'all? When did you reach this place where you sit in church and can't even find an amen and your hands can't even clap and there's no joy in your spirit, only depression about your life? How did you get to this place? What's wrong with you? So there's some stuff you ought to know by now. Beloved, you too grown not to know some of this stuff. You've been through too much not to know some of this stuff. God has revealed himself in too many ways for you to get to this place. <laughs> Y'all don't push me. Watch what he says. Have you not known, have you not heard? Here it is. The everlasting God, the Lord, the creator of the ends of the earth, neither faints nor grows weary, and his understanding is unsearchable. One more time. The Lord, the everlasting God, the creator of the ends of the earth, doesn't faint or grow weary. His understanding is unsearchable. One more again. The everlasting God, the Lord, who's the creator of the ends of the earth, neither faints nor grows weary, his understanding. Y'all, this, this is a very strange response to a people who are wondering how they're going to get out. They're trying to figure out how God is going to do this. And Isaiah's response to them, watch this, is a doctrinal, doxological description of God. Yeah. One more again, y'all are trying to figure out how it's going to shift and when God is going to turn it and how the Lord is going to work it out. And Isaiah says, the everlasting God, the Lord, the creator of the ends of the earth, neither faints nor grows weary, his understanding is unsearchable. They're trying to figure out how it's going to work. He reminds them who God is. He says, y'all are asking the wrong question. You want to know how it's going to work out. You want to know when it's going to be over. You want to know why it's going down. He said, the question ain't how. The question is, who? Because when you know the right who, 
you ain't really got to worry about the how. And your problem is you forget the God that we serve. We don't serve some weak and wimpy God who just sits back on heaven and watching all hell break loose in your life. No, the God we serve is the everlasting God, the Lord, the creator of the ends of the earth who doesn't faint or grow weary. In your Babylon, he's still the everlasting God. In your diagnosis, he's still the Lord of your life. When Boo Boo says bye bye, he's still the creator of the ends of the earth. When they lay you off of your job, he neither faints nor grows weary. No matter what your situation is, remind yourself What's wrong with you? When did you forget who God is? Uh, can I teach Bible? The everlasting God, the Lord, the creator of the ends of the earth, neither faints nor grows weary, and his understanding is unsearchable. AJ, that's the one I got trouble with. His understanding is unsearchable. Well, let me give you the Howard John Wesley translation. You will never understand everything about God. That makes somebody want to quit Wheeler today because you thought the more you came to church and the more you memorized your Bible and the more you prayed that somehow or another you would get a PhD in God. But I came by to tell you his ways. Um, this same Isaiah who says they went on the Lord, he will end his prophecy in chapter 55 and verse 8 and 9. He says, know this, that as the heavens are above the earth, so are God's ways above our understanding. You will never understand everything about God. Now I want to see how you did this. There's good news here though. He says the everlasting God, the Lord, the creator of the ends of the earth, neither faints grow, knows grow weary, um, and his understanding is unsearchable. Let me show you, the, the everlasting God, the Lord, the creator of the ends of the earth, and he faints no grows weary, and his understanding is unsearchable. Of the everlasting God, the Lord, the creator of the ends of the earth, and he faints no grows weary, and his understanding is unsearchable. Uh, he, he's the everlasting God, he's the Lord, he's the creator of the earth. Uh, he doesn't faint or grow weary, and there's some stuff you'll never understand about him. Uh, he puts it at the end to remind you, don't ever let what you don't understand about God cause you to forget everything God has already showed you about who he is. I don't know why this is happening, but he's still the everlasting God. I don't know when it's going to break through, but he's the Lord of my life. I don't know why this went down this way, but he doesn't faint or grow weary. Uh, don't let what you don't understand about God cause you to forget what you do. His understanding is unsearchable. Y'all, I, I know this is going to bother some folk, but every now and then you've got to remind yourself that the mysteries of God can be greater than the certainties of God. That God comes with more question marks than exclamation points. That God is mystery. Now, let me tell you why Isaiah says that to these people, why, why you need to be reminded that God is mystery. Because you need to understand that there are uh, realities in God that aren't even possibilities in your imagination.
Can I help somebody real quick? There are realities in God that aren't even possibilities in your imagination. Um, watch, watch this, watch this. They're, they're sitting there, they hear the word, and they're trying to figure out how we gonna get out of Babylon. Nebuchadnezzar is still on the throne, the Babylonians still rule the world, and Jerusalem is still destroyed. He says God is a mystery. Watch this, because Isaiah says, listen, if I told you how God was going to work it out, you wouldn't even believe me if you tried. <laughs> Come here, let me teach Bible. This way he said, y'all wouldn't know how you're going to get out? I'm going to tell you why. Here, here it is. Nebuchadnezzar is on the throne. The Babylonians rule the earth. But over in Persia, there's a brother named Cyprus who just survived a rebellion against his throne. And, and the enemy in Persia is going to come after Nebuchadnezzar in Babylon. And the enemy you see in Persia is going to come and sack the enemy in Babylon. And then God is going to grant you favor with the enemy who conquered your enemy. And he's going to release you back to Israel with his blessing. You didn't even see that coming. God's going to use your enemy to conquer your enemy to give you favor where you're going. Because God has realities that aren't even possibilities in your mind. Okay, okay, I see some of y'all a little slow. Uh, so, I've been coming to Houston by the grace of God and the favor of this brother for 25 years. I ain't from here, but I've been coming so much, there's some things I just know about Houston. I know where Willie G's is. Yes, I do. Yes, I do. I've been to Vic and Anthony's a whole lot of times. And, and the one thing I know is how to get to the Galleria. <laughs> I believe in retail therapy for my life. <laughs> I know how to get to the Galleria. Whenever I'm staying downtown, I know how to get to the Galleria. I go up Walker, get on 45 North, that's going to loop me into 10 West. I'm going to get on 610 South. I'm going to get off at exit 8C. I'm, I'm going to go down to San Felipe and make a right. And the gallery is on the left. I know how to get to the gallery. My way is to go up Walker, get on 45 North, get on 10 West, Circle around 610 South, get off at exit 8C, make a right on San Felipe, and the gallery is right there on the, I know! So, I had an appointment yesterday at the Galleria to go get a pedicure. Judge yourself. Um, I'm, so I call the Uber, get in the car, and show sure enough, we go up Walker Street. We get on 410, headed up north. Uh, we, at 45 North, we get on 10, go, going west. We circle around to 610 South. Now, let me tell you why I will never live in Houston. Because you all's definition of traffic is ignorant. There was a backup on 610. Because apparently the Longhorns were playing the Cougars and everything was backed up on 610. Now I got an appointment to get a pedicure. Judge yourself. And, and when we get stuck in traffic, I'm watching the screen of the Uber driver, and it backs up 45 minutes. 
and now I'm going to miss. Judge yourself. My pedicure. The brother who's driving starts fussing and says, man, will you let me take another wave? Say, I ain't got nothing to lose. <laughs> he gets off of 610, gets on a service road. He makes a right on Post Oak. And Cosby, he makes a left and starts cutting through parking lots and gets me to the Galleria. I said, man, how did you do that? He said, I've been doing this a long time. I know all the ways to get you where you need to be. And there's somebody at Wheeler you think there's only one way to get to where you want to be in life? And God sent me from Virginia to tell you he knows all the ways. God's been doing this a long time. You ain't the first brother to be sick. You ain't the first sister to go through a divorce. You ain't the first prodigal parent. God knows all. Have you not known, have you not heard who your God is? Your problem is you've forgotten who God is. Watch this, I got to move, and then he says, and he gives power to the weak, and those who have no might, he increases their strength. Watch the irony, watch that. God doesn't grow faint, but he gives strength to those who do. I'm sorry, I'm going to try that one more time. God doesn't get faint, but God gives strength to those who do. Pastor, I was doing my research. The word faint in the original Hebrew of the Old Testament is a word that literally means to get exhausted. You know what faint means? It means to get so weary that you ain't got no more gain in you. Faint means, I just can't do this no more. Faint means, I just can't try this again. Faint, faint is when you get to the gospel of Teddy Pendergrass. You better let it go. Y'all ain't saved. Uh, look. It takes a fool to lose twice <laughs> and start all over again. It, it, it's to get to that, I'm done. And the Bible says that when you get to that place, God gives you strength. The word strength, th this, this is going to confuse a lot of people. The word strength is this Hebrew noun, koach. Everyone say koach. And koach doesn't just mean strength, it means firm. That, that when you've reached the no more again, God gives you some firm. God, God puts some back in your backbone. God gives you some steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord. He, he gives you the ability to stand fast when you want to quit. Can, can I push this? Uh, uh, I don't mean to upset nobody, but the word koach uh, in Jewish literature, uh, Pastor Cosby, this, this, this blew me. It, it doesn't just mean strength. It literally means lizard. Lizard. Wait, wait, when, when I'm faint and weary, God gives me lizard?
we got to remember, for the Jews, there's only one type of lizard they knew, a chameleon. And what they noticed about a chameleon is that it has the ability to survive whatever situation it goes through. And they said, this is what happens when you get weak. God gives you the ability to survive whatever it is you're going through. Here it is. What's wrong with you? You're mad that you woke up in Babylon, but you forgot to shout that you woke up. You're upset that you're living with it, but you forgot to give him thanks that you're living with it. You're mad that you're going through it, but you forgot to praise God that you're going through it. And every now and then, your praise not all be determined by what you're in, but the fact that God kept you while you're in it. I wish I had some kept saints at Wheeler Avenue Baptist Church who can thank God that I woke up with it, that I'm living with it, I'm going through with it. God kept me so I wouldn't let go. God blocked it when it could have destroyed me. The Lord held my life. Okay, um, I, I gotta go, we gotta preach again. Uh, Sister Arch, you know what this reminds me of? It reminds me of my favorite movie. My favorite movie was based on a book by Alice Walker and they, get, they put another one out on Christmas. Um, it's called The Color Purple. Ooh, I love me some Miss Seeley. And, and y'all, you remember Color Purple? Best scene of the movie is the Thanksgiving dinner. Yeah. <laughs> uh, everybody got around the table. And a uh, should come in talking about she leaving. Uh, tweet, I'm sorry, Mary Agnes. She gets up and says, I I'm going, we should. And then Miss Celia looks up and says, I'm going too. And then old, old mister at the table, being agitated by his no good daddy, look back at him and say, uh, where you gonna go? You're black, you're skinny, and you're ugly. She grabbed that knife out that turkey. <laughs> stuck it in his face. When I ever ask you for anything, I ain't ask you for this house. I ain't ask you for these kids. I ain't ask you for your blankety blank hand in marriage. I ain't ask you for a thing. <laughs> she got in that car and she was driving off. And she turned back to look at Mr. And this is what she said. I may be black. I may be skinny, I might even be ugly, but thank God, I'm still here. I'm looking for some Miss Seeley today. I may be sick, but I'm still here. Maybe by myself, but I'm still here. Maybe broken hearted, but I'm still here. May be broke, but by the grace of God. Uh, what's wrong with you? You forgot who your God is. What's wrong with you? Oh, you, you, you forgot that God gave you strength to live with it. Then he closes with the most memorable verse. And they that wait on the Lord shall renew all 
of their strength. He says, you ought to know by now that you can trust in God. You ought to know by now that we walk by faith and not by sight. You ought to know by now that the Lord will make a way somehow. You ought to know by now that weeping only endures for a night, but joy will come in the morning. You ought to know by now oh, that no weapon formed against you is going to prosper. You ought to know by now that greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. You ought to know by now if God be for me. Goodbye, Wheeler. Would you nudge somebody and tell them wait on the Lord and be of good courage and he will. I said he will. He will strengthen your heart. You can't hurry God. You just got to wait. Trust and give him time. No matter how long it takes. He's a God. You can't hurry. He'll be there. Don't you worry. He may not come when you want him. But is there a witness in here? He's always Always, 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 on time. Wait, wait, wait on the Lord. God, to be sure, some of us have been acting like something's wrong with us. We've often forgotten who you are when we were going through what we were going through. Thank you for bringing Dr. Wesley to Wheeler today to remind us that you are the everlasting God, the Lord, the creator of the ends of the earth, and there is no searching of your understanding. Thank you so much for a word tailor-made for so many of us in this service. Thank you helping us to be armed and ready for the days that are ahead. We give you thanks that we can trust you. We give you thanks that if we wait on you, you will renew our strength. And we bless your name now for the word that we have heard. Will you touch somebody's heart today, somebody's mind, prick their heart so they might give their lives to you in this worship experience. Save somebody today. Add to the church if it be your will. Be glorified, I pray, in this moment in time. And I thank you so much that your word will not return unto you void. It will accomplish exactly what you sent it forth to accomplish. And we give you praise for it even now in Jesus' name. Somebody say amen. amen. Celebrate the word of God. Thank God for the Word of God. Thank God for the man of God. Thank God for the man of God. The Jewers are coming to stand with me now, and as they do, our leaders will be all around the cathedral this morning to extend their arms to some brother, some sister who needs to say yes.
to the salvific work of our God through Jesus Christ. If you're here on this Sunday morning, you say, Pastor, I need to be a part of the family of Wheeler Avenue Baptist Church. I hear the Lord leading me to be a part of this congregation even right now. I want you to begin to make your way toward me even before the singing of the song, even before I conclude my little remarks. If you're here and you know that you need to be a part of the family of the Lord, you need to be a part of the congregation of the Lord known as Wheeler Avenue Baptist Church. Just step out from where you are, step out into the aisle that's closest to you. These individuals with their arms extended will guide you down to this front, to the front of this sanctuary, to the front of the cathedral, and even to the front of the sanctuary where others are worshiping with us across the way. If you know you need to come, come on. Come from the balcony. Come from the first floor. Walk in the sanctuary. This is your moment in time. This is your opportunity. And we're going to celebrate while you're walking. I see you coming, my dear sister, down that center aisle. I see you bringing those precious children. Praise the Lord. Come on, whoever will, whosoever will, let her, let him come. I see you, my brother, and I thank God for you. Who else needs to walk? Come on, come on, come on. We're waiting for you. We're waiting for you. I see you coming from the balcony. We're celebrating while you're, while you're descending those steps. I see you, sis. God bless you. I'll trust you and obey. When your spirit speaks to me, yeah, with my whole heart, I'll agree. Whenever anybody walks past you, that's your time to start celebrating. That's your time to start clapping your hands. God bless you. Hey, Amen. Welcome back. I'll say yes, Lord, yes. Sing, church. Yeah. To your will and to your way. I'll say yes. Lord, yes. Whosoever will, let her come. Let him come. Come on, sis. I see you walking. When your spirit speaks to me, with my whole heart, I'll agree. God bless you, my dear beloved. And my answer will be God bless you, dear sister. Praise the Lord. Come on, mother. Praise the Lord for you. We've been waiting on you. Come on. I'll say yes. To your will and to your way. I'll say yes. I see you coming from the balcony, my dear. The Lord be with you. Trust you. I know that. When your spirit speaks. Come on, come on. God bless you, dear sister. Praise the Lord for your obedience to the Spirit of God. And my answer will be yes. Can you sing that with your whole heart? I'll say yes. Say yes, yes Lord. Lord, yes, to your will, to your will, to your will. To your will. I'll say yes, I'll, I'll say, say yes, yes. Lord, yes, I will trust I you, will trust God bless you, you my dear, and with your spirit, when your spirit speaks to me, what are you going to do, with my whole heart? Just stay right there. I'll say yes. My brothers are coming. My brothers are coming. To your will. I'll say yes. Hallelujah. I will trust you. With your spirit. Come on, come on. With my whole Somebody needs to make a decision. I'll say yes. Here they come from the mouth. Come on. I'll say it. I'll say it. I see you in the sanctuary. God bless you for your, your movement this morning.
good morning. Oh, bless the Lord. Thank God for each one of you who has said yes to the leading of the Spirit of the Lord. To those who stand with us here in the cathedral, to those who stand in the sanctuary, I want each one of you to know that we, the Wheeler Avenue family, are excited to welcome you to your new church home. God bless you. Praise the Lord for you. So excited that out of all the places where God could have sent you to either commence or continue your Christian journey, he sent you to Wheeler Avenue Baptist Church. We're excited about that. I'm excited to serve as your pastor. These brothers and sisters are delighted to be your new sisters and brothers in this congregation, in this community of faith known as Wheeler Avenue Baptist Church. I can't wait to see how God's going to use you to make our church a better church. And I'm looking forward to the way we'll be using the gifts that God has already deposited into our church to be a blessing in each one of your lives. On behalf of all of us, I say to each of you, from the youngest to the eldest, welcome to Wheeler Avenue Baptist Church. Church family, come on and celebrate our newest members, our family, here in the cathedral, there in the sanctuary. Praise God for you. Deacon Jules, just raise your hand. That precious man of God, he's our deacon. He's going to lead you to the new member orientation room. Others are going to join you there and share some information with you about the process of new member orientation. And we're going to celebrate that our family just got bigger. Amen. Our family just got expanded to include each one of you. Praise the Lord. Is our co-pastor a preaching man of God or what? Is he amazing? He's absolutely amazing. He's absolutely amazing. No wonder he comes every single year to Wheeler Avenue Baptist Church to proclaim the Word of God because God has deposited in him a rich, a rare gift of proclamation. And I thank God that out of all of the people he could have partnered me with to journey in ministry for all of these years. He pardoned me with you. God bless you, man. I thank God for you. Thank God for you. You are a blessing to the body of Christ, and I pray God gives you long life so you can keep up preaching the word, keep preaching the word to God's people. Listen, it's time for us to leave from this place. Sunday school started 19 minutes ago, and I want you to... Uh, I want you to get to Sunday school. I want you to study the Word of God with your sisters and brothers. Our prayer intercessors are moving to their positions right now. If you need intercessory prayer following the benediction, these sisters and brothers are standing around the walls of the Lord's church to pray with and for you just in case you need somebody to remind you, what's wrong with you? <laughs> to remind you who God is and to remind you that the Lord is still blessing you. Amen. He's in. He's working things out for your good. I can't thank these St. Brooke singers enough. Thank you, Kurt Carr singers. Thank you, Kurt Carr. Thank you, Wheeler Avenue Mass Choir. Best choir I've ever heard in my life, and I thank God for them. And they keep singing, blessing us. And I thank God that they're, most of them, if not all of them, will be with us in the next service. I know Minister Lewis has threatened their lives if they leave. Uh, but I hope that they will, they will stay and be a part of the next experience. Listen, anybody ever grow up with church clothes? You, you, you had church clothes and then you had play clothes. You, you knew the difference? You, know, you, didn't, you didn't wear your play clothes to church. And you showed him wear your church clothes to play. Right? Listen, we have our church clothes on now. About 3.19 this afternoon, we're going to put our play clothes on, and we're going to go down to Discovery Green, and we're going to have a good time playing together, fellowshipping with one another. Listen, there's a big old Wheeler Avenue logo on the ground at Discovery Green. We have literally taken over the place, and we're going to have a great time. You want to know what our, our theme is, Kurt? Blessings on blessings. That's what, our, that's what our theme is for today. And so we're just going to thank God for all the blessings that God has bestowed upon the Wheeler Avenue Church. Let's stand together now as we prepare to leave from this place. Pray for our, our co-pastor. Pray for Pastor Wesley. If, as he mentioned, he's got to preach one more time. Uh, he can do it. Uh, we've cut him down from four services to two. I ain't even studying him. He just come on back in here and pray. Uh, preach, I mean. Go get you some fruit and come on back and eat and preach, man. That's all. That's all I want you to do. And we're looking for, Kirk Carr, you're staying around? You staying around? Okay, you better. Okay, just making sure. <laughs> Love you, man. Love you, man. Just making sure. Come on, let's praise God from whom all blessings flow. Oh, shit. 
strengthen you as you go and may God bless you in your endeavors. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift the light of his countenance upon you and give you his peace. And you're going out and you're coming in in your labor and in your leisure, in your joy as well as in your sorrow, in your laughter and likewise in your tears until that day when we meet the Lord face to face cry holy 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 to the Lord of hosts until that day my brothers my sisters go in peace go in love go in joy and may the very God of peace love and joy go with you now and forevermore in Jesus name as we sing together our man Have a great day. We're departing from the rear of the cathedral first, the rear of the cathedral and the balcony. Please follow the direction of our courtesy.